ladies and gentlemen, Paul Flayhan here with Paul's iOS device with a quick tutorial on showing you how to submit your iOS application to the App Store. So you just got finished with your application, you just built it and completed it in Xcode, and now you want to submit it to Apple. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First, you're going to head over to developer.apple.com, and from here, you will head over to Member Center in the upper right hand corner and if you aren't already signed in sign in with your developer account and now click on certificates identifiers and profiles and on the left hand side click on certificates under iOS apps section and to add a new certificate you will need to open keychain access now you will head to the search option in the upper right hand corner of your Mac and type in keychain access after you've opened Keychain Access, you will then select Keychain Access on your Max menu bar in the upper left hand corner and hover your cursor over Certificate Assistant. This will then expand even more options and then you will select Request a Certificate from a Certificate Authority. Now in this new window, you will fill in the user email address with your developer email and also fill in the common name text field with whatever you prefer. And then you will, after those are done, you will select Save to Disk option next to Request Is and select Continue. This will create your .cert signing request, which you will then use to upload into your developer account page to get your distribution certificate. So save it someplace where you can easily access it. Now we will head back to our developer page, so minimize your keychain access window. And here in the iOS certificate area, you will hit the plus in the upper right hand corner. Scroll down to production and select app store and ad hoc. Scroll down even more and select continue. From here you can read over this, but we have already created your CSR certificate signing request. So click on continue. Now on this page you will now select choose file. Locate your .cert signing request file we created earlier using keychain access. And once you've selected your file, you can now click open and now click submit. Now that your certificate is created, you will then need to download it to some place easily accessible. Now that you've made it this far, we can again open Keychain Access so that you can insert your certificate. To insert your certificate, you will click and drag your certificate into the login portion of your keychains in Keychain Access. Your certificate is most likely in your downloads folder, so locate it there and you can go ahead and click and drag it into your login folder. Now that that is taken care of, we will now need to head back over to our developer site to create an app ID. To create an app ID, you will need to select app IDs on the left of the screen under identifiers. This window is similar to the certificate window, so you will again select the plus in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Now you will then fill in the name text field under app ID description. This can be anything you'd like, but I recommend using the name of your application. Now under app ID suffix, you will keep explicit app ID selected and fill in your bundle ID. To find your bundle ID, you will need to open Xcode and open your project you wish to submit to the App Store. Select your project in the upper hand corner of the screen. Now locate your application's name under targets. Navigate over to your info tab and you will see bundle identifier. Your bundle ID is located under value. You can either keep it the way it is or you can rename it by double clicking on it. I recommend renaming it to your application's name dot your application's name to keep it simple. Now you can go ahead and copy your bundle identifier you just created in Xcode. Head back over to your developer page and paste it into the bundle ID text field. In this case, I'm just going to uh, erase this and type in application name dot application name just uh, for reference. And once you've done that, scroll all the way down to the bottom and select continue. You will now need to confirm your app ID by clicking submit at the bottom of the page. Wait for your ID to confirm and once that is done, you will now click done. You should now see your app ID in the table view under iOS app IDs. With your app ID created, we will now need to create a provisioning profile that will then be added to your project in Xcode. To create your provisioning profile, you will stay on the developer site and select distribution on the left hand side of the screen under provisioning profiles. Again, this window is similar to creating an app ID window, so you will again select the plus in the upper right hand screen. Now you will select App Store option under Distribution and click Continue. 
Now from this window you will now click the drop down menu next to app ID and select your previously created app ID and then click continue. In this window you will select the option next to the common name you created earlier which I suggested as your name and then click continue. From here you fill in the profile name text field with whatever you want. I suggest your application's name and then click generate. This may take a few seconds to a minute or so to generate so be patient. After your profile has been generated, you will now need to download it, so click Download. And after the download is complete, you will then click Done. At the bottom of the page, now I suggest minimizing your browser just to get it out of the way. We will be coming back to it later. We will now need to locate your provisioning profile we just downloaded. The download should be in your finder under Downloads. Now you will double click on the provisioning profile. Once you've done that, select on Add to Library. After your provisioning profile has been added to the iPhone Configuration Utility application, you will need to open Xcode if it isn't already open, and open the project you are ready to submit to the App Store. Once open, you need to have your project selected in the upper left hand corner, and also selected under Project. Now select the Info tab. In the Configuration sections, click the plus button, and select Duplicate Release Configuration. Now double click our newly created configuration and rename it to Distribution. As you can see here I've got a couple dummy distribution names. You should only have Debug, Release, and your newly created distribution under the names in configurations. So what I'm going to do here is just delete my two dummy uh, distribution names and all you should have are debug, release, and distribution. Now under targets, select your application, navigate over to the build settings tab and scroll down to the code signing section towards the bottom. In the code signing identity, you will change all of these to your certificate name. The certificate that you created a while ago, this is what this will be and down here in your provisioning profile you will then fill this in with your newly created provisioning profile you created earlier and make sure you get them all selected just like this after you've done that you will then go to the upper left of your screen and select your application under project navigate over to the build settings and scroll down to code signing and you are essentially doing the exact same thing as before filling in all your certificates and filling in all of your provisioning profiles under code signing. You're doing great. Now at the top of Xcode you will need to change your simulator to iOS device if it isn't already. Now at the top of Xcode in the menu bar select product and hover your cursor over and click archive. Xcode will now archive your project. This could take a few seconds to a minute or so so be patient. I'm going to fast forward through this archiving for your convenience. It roughly took about 33 seconds for mine to archive, so yours may vary. Now that you've archived your project, the hard part is complete. We are now going to head back to our developer page on our browser and select Member Center at the top right of the page. In the Developer Program resources under App Store Dis Distribution, select iTunes Connect. From here you will need to sign in with your developer account. Once in iTunes Connect you will then select Manage Your Apps. And here you will click on Add New App in the upper left hand corner. On this page you will fill out your default language, your app name, your SK SKU number, which can be anything you want. For example, I just used 12345. You can use letters, numbers, hyphens, periods, and underscores. The SKU cannot start with a hyphen, period, or underscore though, so keep that in mind. Also select the drop down menu next to the bundle ID and select the bundle ID you created earlier in this tutorial. Double check this information and make sure it's to your liking, and if so click continue. Now on the next page you will need to fill out the availability date, which can be today. This doesn't mean your application will be released to the App Store today. Next you will select the price tier from the drop down menu and click continue. This next page you will fill out the application's version number 
in this case it would be most likely version 1.0. The copyright can be anything you'd like. I suggest either your company name or even your name. Select the drop down next to the primary category. This is the category you best think your application would fit into. Again below that you need to select your secondary category and here's I'm going to select education and books. Below the version information you will select the options that best describe your application so that your application can be rated. After the rating is complete you will fill in your application's metadata. The application's description, the keywords that best describe your app, and a support URL. Now below your metadata you will fill out your app review information. This obviously consists of your first name, last name, email address, and phone number. Now comes your image uploads. You will need your app icon in a 1024 by 1024 pixel form, a few 3.5 inch retina display screenshots, a few 4 inch retina display screenshots, and if applicable, some iPad screenshots. If you need the pixel dimensions for each screenshot, uh, just select the question mark next to each. Once complete, just click save. In my situation, I've already got a few dummy icons, so I just click back. And from here, you select view details under your application image. In this next window, you will then click on ready to upload binary in the upper right hand corner of the screen. This next page can be confusing. It is now asking if your product was designed to use cryptography. Cryptography is the art of protecting information by transforming it, uh, quote unquote, encrypting it into an unreadable format called ciphertext. Only those who possess a secret key can decipher or decrypt the message into plain text. You will most likely select no, then click save, and then continue. We are now at the final step. You're doing great. So now you will go back to your archived application in Organizer. So locate that. Now that you've selected your archived application, select Distribute to the right of your application. A new drop down menu will appear and now you will select Submit to the iOS App Store. Once you've done that, go ahead and select Next. Make sure your login to iTunes Connect is correct and your application and provisioning profile is correct also and then select Submit. Congratulations on submitting your application to the App Store and I hope your application has great success. Uh, I wish Apple could make the submission process a little more straightforward or at least have a better way of directing developers through this process. This was a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to submit an application to the App Store. If you have yet to do so, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all of the latest tutorials, reviews, and unboxings, as well as follow me on all of your favorite social networks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it as it is the easiest way to help out the channel, as well as sharing it with all of your developer friends. It is always appreciated. As always, this is Paul Flayhan with Paul's iOS device. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. God bless.